over the last couple of weeks, we have been talking to a couple different venues, um, like the Tractor Tavern, um, and asking them how we can help. And so next up, while we get ready for Gabby to Spain, um, I wanted to play an interview that I was fortunate enough to do with um, Evan Johnson, who is the uh, talent buyer at Numos and Barboza. And Dan and I had to ask him a few questions. And um, so are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Evan, I'm wondering if you can real quick for us describe what exactly you do for the people at home, because oftentimes I forget that you know, because I'm a musician, I often forget like there are people that are watching our show that aren't and they want to help. So I'm wondering if real quick you can kind of run people through what the day to day operations are for a talent buyer and um, and how you play a role in the music community. Yeah, definitely. My name's Evan. Um, I'm one of the talent buyers, one of the two talent buyers at Numos, Barboza. Um, and then we also do Capitol Hill Block Party on Capitol Hill. Um, talent buyer's role is it's such a weird title for a job talent buyer but that yeah. kind of is the process of it you're paying some or you're agreeing on some type of financial right construct to put on a show so yes right. in a way I am we are paying an artist x amount of dollars or we're agreeing that here's how the finances break out for them to then perform and then we promote promoters right. another word for it um, you know but daily it's not very glamorous it's just sitting and sending emails all day um, you know working um to book months of a calendar so you know we're looking at what dates were that, that we still have open um filling those working with touring bands to try to fit you know hey okay cool we have these days in seattle um here's when we could play you know in order to make the rest of the routing work agreeing on the finances of it and, and right you know, that, i mean the bigger national touring things is, is you know some type of guarantee offering different deal points just to make sure that the artist is being paid, but then also that the venue is in a position to make money as well. And that's the, right. that's, that's where being a good or bad talent buyer is, you know, sure. it's the horrified gambling of it. This is the question we ask everybody, but like how has COVID-19 affected you guys at Numos and Barboza? Um, it's essentially been an entire shutdown. Obviously our job is to put on events that large groups of people come together in a small confined space to right watch so it's kind of this impossible thing to right. avoid there's not i mean sure there are ways to put on a concert and not have people be in close quarters together but sure. not the way that we do sure uh, yeah. so it's been almost an entire shutdown of just like i still you know am able to do a little bit of work here and there each yeah. day to kind of keep the ship afloat because obviously right. the the end goal is to have these venues reopen right um, exactly fully and you have to have shows to reopen too. So a lot of it is just shuffling things around right now. We've essentially all been laid off though, just in a, in, in a smaller capacity. It's myself and one other person just, right. We, we had to learn how to do all the ticketing things, all the website things to again, keep the ship afloat. So right. um, it's been a, a major impact. Do you guys have any fundraisers or anything that you're doing or just kind of sailing we along don't right now, but there are, I, I just touched base with one of the owners and there's plans to, launch something shortly here awesome okay yeah, well, yeah yeah it awesome. is awesome it is awesome and hopefully because we've seen some other venues around town do it i think that there is and there was a lot more question of like okay well what can we do right um, because there was you know applying for all these different types of loans you never want to like disqualify yourself from that or sure you know obviously fundraising is a different thing but like i think right. there was more priority to okay what can we do with the state with the federal government and, and mm. the whatever money is being done to that so that was the right. focus and now that some of that has there's more clarity about how we fit into those programs now it's like okay now now let's turn to the community and, and hopefully right do something right <laughs> have you seen results from those government programs uh to my knowledge not yet no <laughs> um the issue from again i'm not an expert on this so hopefully this isn't wrong but to my knowledge why a lot of music venues actually don't qualify for those programs is because a lot of the allocated funds, a certain percentage that a business would get, has to be spent within X amount of days right. and mm. like a certain percentage of employees. But right. obviously for music venues, there's no business. Right? No. There's no hours right. to give. Right. You can't just pay people to sit at home and do nothing. Because right. that's, also, that's also not keeping the venue afloat. Right, exactly. Um, so it, we just don't qualify. And also, like if you think about Numos's employee pool, let's say that there's 100 employees, which isn't too far off from what we actually have, I think. Sure. 
you can't, a lot of them are just hourly workers, security guards, bartenders, uh, light techs, sound techs, all that stuff. And it's like, they don't have jobs unless they're shows. So therefore, exactly. show, there's no hours to give. Right. Uh, so it's a really difficult position where the venues just aren't applying for a lot of what's um, been mandated. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's a good segue into Wanma. I was so just going to say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you guys have been helping with Wanma, which is the uh, Washington Nightlife and Music Association. Yep. And you and they've been pushing for um people to call their senators and talk about getting financial assistance. Right. Um so yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like what's been your role? Yeah, my my role has not been much, definitely. One of our owners, <laughs> Stephen, I know, right? I'm probably <laughs> this, but one of our owners, Stephen Severin, has been like really um, at the, at the, the front of the ship for that one sure. as far as Nemos's involvement and he has some other ties there um, but I, I, I do know that that's a big thing for them is just recognizing that a lot of these um, you know relief funds are just they just don't apply to music venues because it's such a, a unique type of um, business so I know that a lot of it has just been trying to get the word through to um, you know, the, the government just locally and, and, and statewide of like, this doesn't apply to us. And like, without this, mm. none of these music venues are going to be able to survive right. the long effects of this, because even if they're to put some semblance of normal business back in place in June, these tours aren't going to happen for a long time. Right, exactly. Even if we were allowed to do group gatherings of a thousand people or less start September 1st, you can't have a touring show on September 2nd with a sold out show. Right. such right. a lag. Right. Not only in the traveling, the actual touring of the bands, but also just the setting it all up, right. promoting it, selling tickets, these things. There's this. There's going to be a, a pretty big lag behind that. Right. Um, and and the way that you know, there's so many moving parts in routing a tour. It's like, well, no band right now. The the initial ideal was to like, okay, cool, let's do October tours, fall tours. Right. And now it's like, well, what happens if that's not the what if that's not right. a safe time to do it? Right. Then we don't want to do this work all again just to move it, you know? It's right. Just so many moving parts. It's better to shoot farther and farther out and not have to do that work again. So, right. So everybody's playing it really safe. Uh, yeah. And, and I don't blame them. You I, know? Yeah, like, no, totally. If I, if I was a booking agent or a manager or an artist, I'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to have my team do this work for no for nothing well you that's know? you know what's interesting too is because we you and i have been talking about doing a show over there at the end of may mm -hmm. and the thing that even if i had wanted to do it everybody in my band left town i mean there were it's mm -hmm. just amazing how it's this domino effect of mm -hmm. you know how everybody gets affected by this domino it was like right. the the artists are afraid to do it or the booking agents are afraid to do it and then the venues get impacted by it and then it just it's it's weird to see how that that has um you guys have been impacted by that and i didn't even think about the fact that like yeah people are aren't even booking shows in fall like they want to go even past that too to take advantage of like doing a show because people are you know we don't know when this is going to end and even when it does mm -hmm. um it's still going to be it's not like everything's going to go back to normal tomorrow you know, um, yeah, and 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 so much of it, I think, too, is that no artist wants to be that first person to yeah. push through it. There's there's a level of sensitivity here. Where it's right. like, well, hey, this is affecting yeah. thousands and thousands of people. People right. are dying from this. It's this really serious thing. Right. That as much of it is a pain in the ass that we have to stay inside and can't go to the movie theater and do this stuff. Like, yeah. it has some really big impacts, and you don't want to be, come across as the insensitive person that tries to push through that. Exactly. So everyone's just kind of following everyone else's suit. And initially, yep. again, it was like, August will be fine. Yeah. And then a couple bands are like, no, I don't think August is going to be fine. You know, right as of now, yeah. there's been no, there's no, there's been no official statement that we can't have a concert on May 5th in, in Seattle. Right. As of now, they, that's right. what it is. It's a shelter at home in place until May 4th. There's yeah. no plans beyond that. Exactly. All of us are well informed to know to know that's going to go past that. Or exactly. Life's not going to resume right away on May 5th, right. but you know, the, things are just shooting farther and farther out and you're kind of looking at each other and just taking, like, yeah. when Coachella moved to October, it was like, okay, October. Yeah. You know, and now there's a lot of people that are like, October, yeah, right. That's not wow. happening, you know. So, but then again, we don't know. Yeah. 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 Speaking it's... of festivals, you said you book for Capitol Hill Block Party too. Do you have any plans for for that? So a funny part is the timing of that is we were supposed to. I think May March 10th was the, the, the that night, that Tuesday night. The 
the leak that Jay Inslee was going to you know, mm-hmm. make an announcement tomorrow, or it was that night that mm-hmm. gatherings of 250 people or less was all they were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was that night. And we were supposed to announce March 10th, the morning. Wow. Yeah, we have, we, everything was done and ready to go. It was built, ready to just flip the switch and we would do it. Yeah. Wow. You know, and then that morning of, we were just like, no, nah, we can't do this right now. We can't. Yeah. Things have been shifting fast. Things were moving yeah. fast. So we had it all ready to go. And it was like, all right, well, let's just wait. Let's hang tight. You know, our festival is in July 19th, to the 21st, like 17th yeah. to the 19th, whatever it was this right. year. Yeah. We have time. So if we can wait this out and it feels like there's a more appropriate time to announce come early April, then we'll do that. Right. Fortunately, obviously we're just not in any position to think that we can do a gathering of 8,000 plus people. Sure. Um, yeah. July. So, um, and a lot of it, the city is like permit wise, they kind of, you know, they're the ones that own these permits and they're not giving us because mm-hmm. they don't know either, you know? Mm-hmm. So you're kind of waiting for someone to tell you no, so you don't have to, just pull the plug but at a certain point we just needed to be like it's not foreseeable that we're going to be able to put this on and block party is an independently owned music festival it's not right. some yeah. big corporate thing right. so if you take a if you take a 25 percent you know loss in business one year yeah it kind of screws it over for every year going forward if there are other years so it's better to sure. just just call it off for this year you know and, and shoot for 2021 which mm-hmm. sucks but yeah it totally does yeah. So right now you're not thinking about rescheduling. You're just right. Right now the plan is to have it happen in 2021. Okay. Um, just because again, even with, like, uh, yeah, it's just it's events of that scale, that size. Right. Like, yeah. We don't know. Yeah. I think that's an interesting point about Capitol Hill Block Party and Numos and Barboza within the whole Seattle landscape as a whole anyway, because you guys work much more with like touring bands who have to fly in and that's much more log- like logistics that you have to deal with than smaller venues like right. the Sunset or like Cafe Racer, things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And and those spaces, uh, hopefully, you know, when we get back to some semblance of, of gatherings, they'll be able to pick up quickly because... Right you know, because that's just the nature of their business. You know, Barboza, we would, and, and Numos, it's just the issue with Numos is 650 capacity. Like, right. I can't imagine they're going to jump to that level right away. It's going to no. be like 50 people or something. Right. Yeah. No. So yeah. um, there's some pros and some cons to it. Of, yeah. At, at that point, if it is like, you know, you can have a show with 50 people, is that, is that something you guys would do? Like, is that worth it? Or would you take too much of a loss? Mm. It's it's hard to say, you know, Barboza is a 200 capacity venue. So 50 people is not bad in that room, especially yeah. the room, just the way it's kind of built. It doesn't yeah. look terrible to have 50 people. Yeah. In that I, I feel like I've been to a lot of shows at Barboza where there's like 40, 50 people. Right. Yeah, I've been yeah. to shows where there's less than that. It doesn't right. Feel, you know? Yeah. But it's, I think at that level, especially in Barboza, it's, it's worth doing. Uh, it's, yeah. it's tough to kind of see with the finances of how this all breaks out because sure. It's also a matter of how long like this goes on because as of right. now, you still got to pay rent, you know, and right. it's like um, at a certain point, it's it definitely would be worthwhile to reopen, even if it's in a smaller capacity mm. yeah. A to have any chance of making money, but also B to employ these people that we have on our right. part of our staff. It's like that week or so when there was 250 people or less, it was that Wednesday to the following like Monday mm. when they just shut it all down. We still wanted to do things we were talking internally of like whatever we can do to get out to get you know people hours and wages yeah. let's do it it wasn't right. out of like we think we're going to make a ton of money <laughs> you know it was out of this is an important you know this is an important space in capitol hill and in the seattle arts music community like it's important for us to try to do something right yeah. versus just shutting down so so what's next for you guys i mean you guys are working on a fundraiser yeah. Yeah. I think the, the plan as of now is to do some type of, you know, live streams. And it's, it's been nice because we have had people reach out. Yeah. Artists reach out saying, Hey, you know, whatever we can do, whether that's playing in Numos, yep. Barbos are recording something, streaming from there. Yep. Yes. That's, that's been really great. Um, Good. You know, the, on the flip side of that, that takes some coordination and some, yep. you know, paying people and, and all that stuff. So you have right. to kind of figure that back end stuff out. Uh, totally. Outside of that, it's, I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just taking it day by day as far as, you know, when updates come, it, it feels like what this is being recorded on April 27th. Mm-hmm. Hopefully come that May 4th date when the shelter and home is 
at least reevaluated, then right. we'll have a better idea of when we can, you know, I, yeah. right. Pessimistically, I don't think that we're really going to be able to do full on shows for quite a while. Yeah. 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 I don't know what that means, you know, but just the way that I've seen internally of things, especially touring things shift. Right. You know, I think Los Angeles had announced that they're not doing any concerts or sporting events for the rest of the year. Jeez. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's huge. LA is a different city than us. It is very different, but yeah, I know that's, that's worth taking note of though. That's, yeah. I did read the same article that was talking about how they were planning on canceling all live events until 21. Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully that doesn't come to it here, but yeah. Yeah. Same. Uh, you know, and that's the, that's the other, the, it's the return to this domino effect idea. It's like, all right, well, if you can't tour through LA, arguably the biggest market you could tour through if you're a musician, right. Right. There a point to doing Seattle and San Francisco. Right. It, like it, right. it all, everything is affected by everything. Yeah. Um, so do you, do you guys have a point where you just wouldn't be able to reopen? Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. There's probably there's a point where every business could reopen. And, you know, maybe not Amazon and and, and <laughs> right. that, but like yeah. You know, for again, an independent we're an independently owned music venue, the biggest one in the in the city, and right. and we're in the big, arguably the busiest street corner nightlife wise in the state. Yeah. Like, right. Right. I don't know the rent numbers, but it in, can't. Yeah. Be. <laughs> yeah. Probably the yeah. most expensive. At a certain point, there would be. I, I imagine with any business, there's a point where you can't bleed more and more money. You eventually run out. Right. That being said, I know that the owners and, and everyone involved in the business are very dedicated and, and committed to making sure that it opens. Right. Regardless of financial you know, losses, because it is such an important staple to the community. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and because, yeah, just, just because of how important it is. Um, and, and yeah, it's been around for so long and, and yeah. it really sucked to see another music video not exist in Seattle. Yeah. Um, you know, I just think that music venues are in this position where just the nature of the business, they are going to run into much bigger, much higher costs yeah. to, sur to, to survive or, yeah. or to come back, you totally. know? Totally. And it, sadly, as much as I'm an optimist, I think that this is going to, if this goes on for as long as we kind of think it will, there's going to be venues that don't come out of it a lot. Yeah. Which yeah. is yeah. a terrible thing to think of. Like, yeah. yeah, Seattle's a music city, but why can't we keep venues alive? Like, I'll, even outside of this. Yep. You know, yeah. There's, there's, there's venues that have always been struggling. And yep. It's, and that's, that's a whole other conversation. That's why people need to stay home too. Right. Like right. that's why yeah. people need that's to like practice so. social distancing. When we have an artist that comes in here, I mean, this space that I'm in currently is, it's a massive garage, but we don't even, we don't even hug people. We're just like, Hey, yeah, you're here. Cool. Go perform right there <laughs> and right. then come out the way you came, Love you know, it. go out the way you came. And so it's, uh, it's important for people, you know, like there's a sense of urgency that needs to be there because we can't sustain doing this. The economy can't sustain doing this for very much longer. For sure. For so. sure. And, and, and when we get to the point of being in a place that people can go back and, you know, actually be in these business spaces, it's important to obviously, you know, remain cautious and remain safe and totally. all of that, but, but totally. be willing to, you know, help out specifically be willing right. to help out the people that, you know, the service industry people, you know, oh, yeah. bartenders, waiters, all, all these people that don't have the backing of yep. a, a bigger corporation to keep them afloat yep. for months at a time without work. Yep. Um, you know, so, so keep that. I think I really do hope that coming out of this, everyone will keep that in mind a little bit more. So the yeah. next time you go to tip someone, you realize like, man, $2 is nothing for, yeah. you know, the, the, but, but for a, for a bartender, for a server, that stuff, it all adds yeah, up. It adds so, up. Totally um, adds up. It's important to take care of those people who, who depend on it more than you know, the people that have billions of dollars in the bank. Sure. Um, well, Evan, we really appreciate you coming on here. And um, and again, w you know, we'll we'll stay on top of you and, and um, hope that the fundraiser gets going pretty soon here so that you can see just how much the community loves and supports what you guys are doing. Um, and we'll be making sure to spread the word on our end and we'll be posting the social media and the, uh, the email, um, the newsletter um, for everybody to, um, sign up for. So, um, thank you for doing this and hang in there. Um, because there are a lot of people that are, um, eager to get back out there and start playing gigs over there. Yeah. Same. I, pre I appreciate you too. And, and anyone else who's working on this, being a part of this, cause it really is important. And I've just felt at times you can feel so helpless. And so like, ugh, I don't even want to like, just don't have that same motivation and drive to do it because you're not reminded of like right. why we want to do this, going to shows, listening to this and that. And it's like, it's right. really, it's really inspirational to, to chat with two people and to know that there's other people out there that are 
keep on fighting and keep on trucking, even if it is not the best of circumstances. So I, I appreciate you two having me on for sure. Without a doubt. And yeah. again, you know, let us know how, how we can help moving forward, but let's stay in touch and um, we appreciate you. Thanks y'all. All right. Thanks, Evan. Talk to you soon.